Hello everybody and welcome back to my F1 2012 career mode. Today we start Season 2. Absolutely incredible support on Season 1. I've thoroughly enjoyed this series so far. And that's why I'm going to up the ante a little bit. We're going up to 100% race distance and I'll be live streaming the races. Uh, like I did with the F1 2010 career mode. If you want to watch the live streams, which will be usually a day before the recorded videos are uploaded, like you've been watching then click the link in the description down below. Let's jump into this episode. As soon as you like the video and subscribe to the channel, let's go. A quick look at the standings. Everybody's on zero points, but of course, because of the uh, changes in the tiers for the teams, some teams are faster, some teams are slower. So I think Mercedes will be faster. Ferrari will be slower. I think Sauber will be slower. Williams will be faster. Caterham will be faster. Force India will be slower. I think that's how it works. So we'll see a mixture of different teams getting points and getting good results or bad results in turn this season. It all starts though with the first race of the season. It's the Australian Grand Prix. Let's jump straight into qualifying. After his rookie season last year, many eyes will be on James Early to see if he can deliver greater performances for Toro Rosso. I already won a race last season. What do you mean greater performances? And so qualifying for the first race of the season. Q3 is the objective. Alongside my Australian teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. It's dry for qualifying today. And I'm really excited just to see the mixed up grid uh, with the cars changing performance. Let's get out there and set a lap. Here we go then. First lap on the board. Let's get this one underway. We've got traffic. It's my teammate. And he... Oh, if I get a penalty for that, I'll actually cry. Why has he done that? Why are you parking on the apex, mate? You know I'm on a lap. A uh, bit wide there. Apart from Daniel Ricciardo being an absolute weapon on that lap, it was it was clean. It's the first lap time on the board. It's going to be a 129.2, which I'm pretty certain is quicker than what I set on a HRT last year. Early times being set. James' early times being set. Petrov is uh, only a three tenths behind me. Of course, that Caterham is upgraded now, isn't it? Or Lotus or whatever it's called. Uh, Perez fastest by nine tenths as it stands. I will most likely have to go out there again just to improve. I'm down in... Uh, I'm 17th now. So yeah, we, we got to get out there again. But I can only assume it was quicker than my last lap. It's down towards the line we go. It's not going to be troubling Rosberg at the top. But it is a 128. A 28.6. And that's 13th place. And we make it through to Q2 quite comfortably in the end. 13th place in that first session. We've seen one of the cage rooms knocked out. Petrov in 18th. Both Force Indias are out. Hulkenberg in 21st. Alder Esther in 23rd. It's Force India versus HRT for back of the grid duties this season. And who's fastest in Q1? It's Nico Rosberg in the Mercedes as we move on to qualifying two. I forgot to mention the objective today is 14th place in qualifying, which is very much achievable. I think if we can hook up the lap, a Q3 appearance is once again possible. We have one new set of tyres for this Q2 session. My first run, I'll go on the used tyres. See, I've completely messed that up. No, don't get angry, James. I've just messed that up for myself by touching the grass. Touching grass is bad. And that was my lap on the worn tyres. I made a few mistakes as well, so it's not going to be anywhere near as good as my Q1 lap. I'm three seconds off button with that one. There's no chance I get through to Q3. I would need to find over a second improvement, more than that now, to uh, make it into Q3. So I think the best we can really do maybe is 13th place. Yeah, I'm going to lock in for this lap. Oh! My God! Okay. Well, that's not worked. And an unfortunate end to Q2. We've been out-qualified by a Caterham. It feels like season one again. But at least we made it through to Q2. Out-qualified by my teammate Ricardo, And we failed the objective of both Ferraris knocked out in that second session. The Sauber of Kamui Kobayashi and Maldonado in the Williams. And uh, those drivers in the top 10 making it through to the final shootout. I, I don't know what to tell you, mate. The car, cars are absolute boats. We need we need upgrades. Or, oh, James, you could just drive better. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I have 58 laps to make it up in the race. Team are not happy with me right now. 58 lap race. The first 100% race I'm doing on this game. And Lewis Hamilton starts on pole. Nico Rosberg, his childhood friend, starting alongside him. Then we have Button and Rosberg. Button and Rosberg. Button and Grosjean on the second row. Weber starts in fifth at his home Grand Prix. Ahead of Raikkonen, Perez, Vettel, Schumacher in that Mercedes. All the way down in ninth alongside uh, Bruno Senna. Now that we've expanded to 100% races, it really opens up strategy options. We've been given a three-stop strategy today. Starting on the option tyres, going to lap 13 for the primes. 
all the way to lap 31 for another set of the options and then a final set of the options on lap 44. Guys, I have, I have like two friends. Well, there's only one more thing to do and that's go racing. The 2012 Australian Grand Prix is next. First race of the season, about to get underway. Three lights, four lights and five. And season two of F1 2012 is underway. My initial reaction is going to be putting the brake bias rearwards as Kovalainen has got a much better start than me. I'm going to look to the inside though of the catering for turn one. I can send my car up the inside. That's very late braking from me. I've taken advantage of Massa's slow start. I'm already up a couple of places. I'm four wide going onto this straight on the run down to turn three. I'll dump the curves to get ahead of the both Ferraris and maybe look to the inside of my teammate. Somebody's lost the front wing up ahead. That might be Michael Schumacher. It might be Sebastian Vettel. They're all going very slowly. So I'll swoop round the outside of all of them through turn four. I might get a penalty for that because I went outside the track limits. No, they don't care. We're up to ninth place. What a start. We've had two retirements on the first lap. And we're down to 22 runners. I do believe Bruno Senna is a bit quicker than me right now in the Williams behind. We'll have to do some defending duties down the main straight. Oh, no. That's wide at the final. Well, second to final corner. That's so easy to do with these brakes. We go on to the main straight to start lap three. I'm going to be under pressure here from Bruno Senna. The RS enabled this lap. We're just ahead of him right now. And another driver has retired. We're down to 21. They're dropping like flies. As in the background, we're seeing the Williams potentially switching positions. Both Maldonado and Senna right behind me. I'll struggle to hold on to this place, but I'll try my best. I realise I'm not actually effectively using my curves on a lap. I kind of forget it's there. And I'm going to get passed here by Bruno Senna, who's looking to the inside for turn one. The Williams driver. Well, he's not broke late enough to get the position off me, though. And now he's got a great run down towards turn three with the DRS as well. The Williams driver, can he do it this time? No, he cannot. And whilst we're battling, Kobayashi and Grosjean up ahead have been going at it. We've slowly sort of crept towards them. And we've made it within the RS range of Kamui Kobayashi in front. We're still stuck behind Roman Grosjean as we start lap eight of this race. Maybe we can have a run here. The second DRS zone down towards turn three, dumping the curves as well. I'll pick the outside on the Sauber. And maybe the outside on the Lotus of Grosjean as well, who sees me coming. I break later than both of them. I'll have the inside line on the Frenchman through turn four. Force him out wide and take the place. And that's a double overtake up to seventh place. I almost installed a Midland livery on the Force India as we lap Hulkenberg. Just to sort of tie in with their lack of performance this year. Senna has got past Grosjean as well as Kobayashi. So he's right on the back of me. This is now the battle for seventh. Senna, he's blocked there. He's going to be complaining over the radio, even though I didn't change my line. That's just a failure to comply with, I don't know, a good standard of driving from Bruno Senna there. But this time he's got a better run. Maybe to the outside he goes. Thinks better of it. Did something happen on screen? Carthur Karen, what are you doing, mate? Don't lift off there, son. Crazy guy. I feel the pressure. I feel the pressure of Bruno Senna. We start lap 12, and there goes the Williams. He's finally made the move and then broke 50 meters before the braking zone of turn one. And we'll go back around the outside and retake seventh. We're boxing at the end of, I think, next lap. And we've reached lap 13, so we're boxing at the end of this one for our first out of three scheduled stops in this great oh, race. Race. I was going to say Grand Prix and then said race, but it just turned out to be grace. And Senna's got a great run on me here. To the outside he goes, and this time he actually makes it. Wow. Impressive from Bruno Senna. He's up to 7th. I'm down to 8th place. Caught me a bit napping there. And now we'll box. Maybe we can go for the undercut. Senna stays out. And we bring the car into the pits on lap 13. 4.5 seconds stop. And uh, we didn't get slowed down. We're still ahead of Maldonado, who I feel has gained a load of time through that. As we rejoin the back end of the points in 10th place. So potentially Maldonado had a drive through to serve. Because he gained a load of time in the pits on me seems unrealistic and he's dropping loads of time now as well suggesting that he's not on fresh tires there's a few drivers in the pits on the end of lap 14 including Felipe Massa and uh, Roman Grosjean so we're back up to eighth place not quite seventh I think Senna yeah Senna's rejoined in front of me Rosberg leads after the first round of pit stops they've all gone on to the option tires for the second stint and it's Hamilton, Button, Raikkonen, Weber, and Perez all on the options Maldonado's also on the options and he did switch tires interesting 
A mixture between primes and options. Three retirements so far. Both Marusha's out and poor Doresta. At least that's what I've found. Oh, off, off, off. He's off and into the gravel. Bruno Senna out. Or is he still in? I don't know. I turned into full Maureen Walker there. So we know Maldonado is on the option tyres and he's trying to force his way through. We're in seventh right now. In fact, we're the lead prime runner in this race. I'd imagine Maldonado will make short work of me. Considering the tyre advantage he has. Karthik has done it in the exact same place again. This absolute cucumber. These tyres have really come into their own now. I'm feeling pretty confident on them as we're about to start lap 19 of this race. But this is the only stint we're doing on these tyres, but we do have two very fast drivers behind. Maldonado and Michael Schumacher. I think we've actually just lost Michael Schumacher. I think he's gone. And Maldonado outbreaking me into turn one. What a move that is from the Venezuelan. And up to sixth place he goes. I remain in seventh because Hamilton's gone into the pits. What a brilliant move. Round the outside by the Williams driver. Daring, bold, brave. And it's worked out for him. I was pinned to the middle. I could do nothing about that. We just scraped the bollard there through turn 11. That could have been a front wing ending, not race ending. So Maldonado is definitely quicker than me, but he's on a different strategy. We know he's on the options. I'm on the primes. As we approach half race distance, the first round of season two. Why is it this corner every single time where I have to lap somebody? This time it's Nico Hulkenberg. And we're now up to sixth place. I assume that was Maldonado into the pits. Perez 10 seconds up the road. We're still basically holding Hamilton up, ruining his race, but who cares? And more drivers into the pits, and we're suddenly up inside the top five. It's fourth place right now. It's a lap down, Williams. Ah. It's Hamilton has a run on me towards turn three, and that's Bruno Senna going very slowly on the apex. A driver who is now a lap down after his earlier mistake, and he's gone straight off the track again. Bloody hell! What is wrong with Bruno Senna today? As that's Hamilton... Looking to the outside. He can't make the move stick. This is a driver who was battling for the lead of this race on his first stint. And he must be absolutely furious with the McLaren team for pitting him and bringing him out behind James Early. And finally, Lewis Hamilton makes up the move. And that's... Is that Grosjean into the pits or somebody else into the pits? We're boxing at the end of this one. Reset the options. As we've surpassed half race distance. We'll bring it into the pits then on the end up 31. We've got two more stops including this one to go. And after that pretty quick pit stop, we're going to rejoin here, maybe outside of the points, depending on who's coming down towards turn one. Is that Felipe Massa? Need to stay ahead of him if we want to stay in the points. It's Alonso round my outside, and he's all over the place on the exit turn one. And now we're in the slipstream of the Spaniard, dumping the curves on the run down to turn three. If I can break late on these fresh option tyres, which I can do, uh, it means we remain in the points, 10th place. Why is Alonso that far down? Of course. Ferraris aren't good anymore, are they? I forgot they went down a tier. He's the reigning world champion, and he's in like a midfield car now. I completely forgot that. Oh, somebody's off the track there. That's Maldonado. Maldonado finds himself in the mud, and we're suddenly up to ninth place. And Schumacher in the pits, so we're up to eight. Another driver rejoining, going into turn one. Whether that's a lapped car or not, I think it's Roman Grosjean. It's Grosjean. He's on my lap, and he is now prey to James Early. For the overtake, of course. Seventh place is mine as we swoop past the Lotus driver on the run down to turn three. And Grosjean's going to get me here on the run down to turn three. Around the outside, the Lotus driver goes. That's payback for what I did to him two laps ago. And I'm down to eighth place. I've got Alonso, Schumacher, and Maldonado all very close behind me. And now Alonso looking to the outside of turn three. The Ferrari driver can't pull that move off. Remember, he's the reigning world champion and he's suddenly finding himself in the midfield battle so we have 20 laps to go in this race and for me to score points i need to time my pit stop perfectly to avoid getting undercut or overcut by the three drivers directly behind me and here goes michael schumacher who's made it past fernando alonso and now he makes it past james early schumacher up to eighth in what is most likely the fastest car on the grid i don't know where maldonado's gone he's not behind alonso anymore and now Alonso is going to relegate me another position. I've forced him up to the inside for turn one, but he's made it through. Well, he thought he made it through. I've outbroken him into turn one to regain that place. As Schumacher sets the fastest lap, clearly with a lot of pace. Alonso, the second bite at the cherry this time, he makes it through. Oh, De La Rosa, what are you... Mate, move out of the bloody way! 
Uh, we're boxing at the end of this lap, lap 44. He did that on purpose. He saw that I was chasing down Alonso. And into the pits we go for the final time in this race. Boxing from 10th place. We're definitely in the fight for the final point today. Uh, Alonso boxed the same lap as me. We're going to rejoin outside the points for the first time today in 11th place. And we're back up to 10th place with the driver in the pit. Now we just need to hold on to this position till the end of the race. Now, I'm pretty certain this is the second time I'm lapping Nico Hulkenberg today. The Force Indias have one of the worst performing cars. Maybe the worst car on the grid. I was originally going to do some livery changes for this season. But looking at race department for all the liveries, lots of them are just like weird fantasy liveries from somebody's private 2034 racing season. That changes all the helmets as well as the car liveries. And I didn't want those. Yeah, we're getting lapped. Can't believe it. Race leader Nico Rosbo putting a lap on me. That was the worst way to let him through. I've got so many marbles on my tyres now. And Kobayashi is going to be putting me under pressure for the final points position. Less than 10 laps to go. And I'm going to be really under pressure here from Kobayashi. who has got a great run. I don't think he's going to... Oh, he's going to try to the inside. Backs out of the move. We've got more traffic in front. So the laps are ticking down. Kobayashi with a great run to the outside. He goes and the Sauber driver relegates me outside the points position. Can we fight back on the run down towards turn three? He's going to have to DRS, but I've got Kurs to use. But I'm not close enough, am I, to the Japanese driver. And he's got the position and I fear he's going to run away with that. I've got three laps of extra fuel. It's time to use it now. It could get worse for me here as here comes Felipe Massa. And we're down to 12th place. It was really falling apart at the end of this race. And it's not much I can do about it. I just don't have the pace compared to these drivers. And Kurz is broken. Kurz has failed on the car as we've got four laps to go. And now Sebastian Vettel in the Red Bull is quickly catching me. By about three seconds a lap. You saw where we were after 50% of the race. We were well inside the points. And that's usually when it would end. Lap 29. But now that it's a double that length, it falls apart in the second half. Where drivers recovering from a bad start actually do recover in time. Not sure I'll be able to stop this. As here comes Sebastian Vettel. And through he goes. The German up to 12th and early down to 13th. Unlucky for some. And Kovalainen, here he goes. I'm going to make sure I'm in rich mix here. I'm going to defend as best I can against him. He's gone to the outside anyway and he's crashed into me. Please don't give me a penalty game. And Kovalainen will be furious with early. But early is unapologetic. 20 drivers left in the race. I fear Heike Kovalainen was the fourth retirement of this one. And Nico Rosberg wins the season opener in that Mercedes in truly dominant fashion. And after early promise, no pun intended, James Early slips outside the points at the end of the race. And will round the final corner for the final time to cross the line in 13th place. Rosberg wins by 27 seconds ahead of Jensen Button. Kimi Raikkonen in third completes the podium. Lewis Hamilton, after being stuck behind James Early for about 15 laps, can only manage fourth place by the end. Home hero Mark Webber starts and finishes in fifth place ahead of Grosjean. Perez in seventh. Michael Schumacher recovered to eighth. Fernando Alonso recovered to ninth. And Kobayashi in the Sauber completing the top 10. Massa and Vettel just missing out there. Vettel, of course, caught in the contact on lap one. Early and Ricardo 13th and 14th for Toro Rosso, ahead of the two Williams, who are ahead of the two Caterhams, Kovalainen, of course, retiring, the two HRTs finishing the race, and Nico Hulkenberg, four laps down in the Force India. Sahara Force India F1 team have serious issues on their hands. Uh, three DNFs right at the end there, Timo Glock, Schall Peak, and Paul de Resta. And it means Rosberg leads the championship, of course, the results of the race are the Drivers' Championship as at this stage. So we're in 13th place. jean luc Verne's still shown there in 25th, just in case I move teams halfway through the season. Uh, McLaren lead Mercedes, though, in the Constructors by one point. Lotus up there as well. A Red Bull have a lot of work to do. Ferrari, uh, well, they're not going to be winning any of the titles this season, are they? They won the Drivers last year. They did not win the Constructors last year, and they are definitely not going to win it this year either. Toro Rosso currently sits in 7th place, yet to score a point. Thank you for watching the opening round of season two. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and I'll join you next time for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Goodbye.